Hi everyone! Welcome back to my second art journey vlog. Um, today's topic is gonna be about five things to do before starting your own art journey. And this is purely just my opinion. Um, these are kind of the things that I wish I knew before I got started. Alright, so these are the things, the five things that I wanted to do before starting my own art journey. Um, I probably I think most people make this kind of video like maybe many years in but I wanted to document my literally my I wanted to document my art journey so I'm just gonna make these videos topics as I go while I learn because then it'll be like fresh in my head right so for those of you who don't know me I am technically I want to say I'm like a complete beginner when it comes to learning how to draw and things like that but I do I mean it really depends on I guess your perspective right because like some people might say that I am not a beginner because I have been drawing for some time I have a sticker shop and things like that but in my own personal opinion I feel like I'm a complete beginner I want to learn how to draw and I want to be more um, I don't know like I don't know I guess I want to know like the fundamentals and all that thing all, all that thing um, all those things like that and so from here on out like anytime I refer to myself as a beginner that's just my own personal opinion so with that being said um, for the last two years I've been dipping my feet into the art world seeing if there was room for me to be an actual artist or if it was just all a dream that I needed to wake up from this has been a um, internal struggle that I have been dealing with for 30 plus years and I'm I don't know I've like never been more scared than I am now trying to figure out if basically trying to figure out if I'm good enough to be an artist right like am I worthy of being an artist oh my gosh i might get i might slightly get emotional here slash my allergies are acting up as usual so i'm kind of nasally my apologies i knew that like me wanting to learn how to draw wasn't like for fun or as a hobby i've been neglecting my true passion to become an artist since i was in elementary school cast in the shadows by my biggest fear imposter syndrome but anyway so yeah uh, i tried to start an instagram account several times uh but i just felt like it was too much pressure to be have to be consistent about posting regularly and that is a whole nother issue on its own that maybe i'll talk about another day but i couldn't come up with enough like drawings to post and i was afraid of how many likes or in this case no likes or followers I would receive once I started so that's another battle that I've struggled internally in the past over the years of like whether it be an art account or just like my personal account I know a lot of people can relate to that struggle of feeling like you're not good enough because you don't have any likes or followers but that's something I've been working on and honestly it kind of stings now but it's not the end of the world like I'm not gonna be depressed and hiding in my hole for like until I have like I don't know what's a what's a big number these days like a million followers I don't know back then I would have been over the moon if I had even like a thousand followers right so I would literally create like brand new accounts to test the water over and over until I finally decided to build my business with an official LLC uh, that I have registered with the state and decided I can't keep going back and forth so it's real this time I've kept my Alex by design Instagram alive but barely not much action has been happening there aside from the time I was highly motivated to create reels for my Etsy shop when I first opened which was the next experiment I wanted to share with you about so having an art Instagram is one thing but I decided why not take a chance and see if my art would sell right so again like through much trial and error I'm proud to say I am in my third year on Etsy but it's not like I'm like making a full-time income out of it keep that in mind so I did test out Etsy ads for a short period of time last year which I'll talk about in another video um, currently I have about 200 a little over 200 sales right now which to most people is probably not that much um, and like I don't know if I guess if I really think about it 200 is a lot like 200 plus people have you know like they liked your work and they paid physical money for it and so I should really be proud of that but you know 
my homegirl imposter syndrome is just like, yeah, you're not good enough. But yeah, this video isn't really about the experiments and things I've tried over the years. But initially, I wanted to create a video of five things I learned that I needed to take care of before I start my art journey. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos over the past couple years from artists and how they got to where they are but by the time they make these kinds of videos they're already killing it in the art world like they have thousands of followers they can afford to do art like full time and things like that right but for me um, someone would like that <laughs> <laughs> For someone with the memory of a goldfish, like I get called Dory often by my friends and I always just say I have literally the memory of a goldfish but basically I wanted to, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I wanted to document my entire journey learning how to draw from the bottom up, like from scratch. I wanted to make a video about the things I needed to learn or do before I could even muster up the courage to finally pick up a pencil and just draw. So. Here we are. Number one on the list is imagination. I know, you're probably like, what is she talking about? So I actually did not realize, like it didn't hit me until like maybe, um, like a, when did I write this? Maybe like a week or two ago where I was journaling and I realized I've actually been, I didn't have an imagination, like it was missing. like. I mean, how do I, how do you even like, I don't know, like how do you, how does your imagination go missing, right? I know, like so I was like mad journaling and I was like, what the heck, like where the hell did my imagination go? And then so I had to like reflect on that, right? So for like the past give or take maybe, I don't know, five to six years, I supposedly blocked out all those things I consider fun. Um, basically kind of like reading fantasy fiction books, watching cartoons, anything fun honestly. I think I just depleted myself of fun because I like completely submerged myself into just learning how to start a business, how to become an entrepreneur, how to build wealth and whatnot. All I did in my spare time was read boring books on business which they're not technically boring boring they're just fun killer books like i love reading business books don't get me wrong it's just not fun um so i filled my entire instagram feed with just motivational quotes like speakers and successful entrepreneurs it was just always about how to become successful in life right and that was just kind of my grind for the last I don't know half a decade like it's all I'm just filling myself because you know how like they say the top five people in your life are who you kind of become or whatever kind of same thing with like lifestyle too like I try to just cut out anything that's not you know going to build wealth basically like if you were to look at my desk right now the stack of books that I have in front of me is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill the Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale and How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Everybody knows that book. So yeah, those are my books that I so-call inspiration and have in front of my desk at all times. Uh, then one day I started to discover artists on my Alex by Design Instagram account where I started to follow artists that I really like. Their drawing styles, their colors, fantasy theme. I needed to keep business and pleasure separate and so then I started actually becoming a little more active on my Alex by Design Instagram art account. Um, I eventually became so addicted to just following, liking, and consuming their artwork. It became overwhelming because then my imposter syndrome grew even bigger. I always thought I couldn't draw like this even if I tried. Man, I was getting in the heat of this like topic and then my battery was about to die. I just looked at my screen and it was like blinking so I had to change my battery. I kind of forgot what I was talking about. Uh, oh yeah, so I couldn't draw like this even if I tried, right? So that's where my imposter syndrome comes from. The stickers that I do have on my shop and for all those people who have supported me over the years, those are just random spurts of inspiration that I get, out of, get somewhere. Like my favorite thing, if you know me in my shop, is like mental health positivity and puns if i can tie them together that's even better and so like i'll like come across this pun or i'll think of this pun or something like this one day and i'm like okay what can i draw with this and then that's kind of i just go with the flow right but i can't just pump out cute designs like i want to make like little fantasy themed like i don't know when you see a picture i'm trying to imagine one right now where it's like 
I don't know, they're in the woods and they have all these little creatures or something or like there's a story behind it, right? And I for some reason can't draw like that and so that's where I think I kind of figured out I don't have my imagination um, but anyway, so yeah, I did try I tried to replicate my favorite artist's artworks not like copy it and call my own I'm not trying to plagiarize or anything like that I just wanted to like draw what they draw in their like like let's say again like it's a bear in the forest or something like that right so like I wouldn't straight up copy their work but it's like how can I draw my own bear in a forest <laughs> what would it look like but I just couldn't get it right I don't know I just didn't know what I was lacking once I got the once I did get the hang of copying like other artists styles then I realized I couldn't create my own style and I know finding your style is this whole other like controversy that it's like a rabbit hole that I've been going under down um, but I know that's like a whole nother thing so anyways so yeah I would look at an artist drawing with cute little duckies or a frog on a lily pad in a pond and I thought to myself why can't I come up with ideas like this on my own to draw like I would then go on Pinterest and then I got addicted to doom scrolling and saving and pinning every inspiration I thought would eventually help me but I was wrong I just couldn't come up with my own ideas like literally at all and so the other day I randomly thought holy shit I haven't had an imagination in years it sounds weird I know how do you like not have your imagination right but I think I was just so hyper focused on consuming all things business related I had no brain space left for fun or imagination so I started writing down in my journal all the things I used to enjoy I remember as a kid I love all things magic like don't judge me or you can judge me but like anything magical right like sorcery witches spells and potions i used uh imagination <laughs> as an excuse to let myself watch a show on netflix called a discovery of witches and i literally binge watched all three seasons in one week like i don't think it was even seven days actually if you can't tell already, I have an addiction issue. Like anything I like sink my teeth into, I get addicted and it's really, really bad. But my brain went all over the place with ideas and I was just so ecstatic. I couldn't wait to start drawing all these ideas I had flooding into my mind. I was like, yes, this is it. Like this is where my imagination is coming from. And then I remembered, wait, <laughs> I don't know how to draw. <laughs> Which again is very subjective because, you know, like, Yes, I know how to create something on a piece of paper, but at the same time, like, I don't know how to draw, draw, right? And, like, what is, like, drawing to you? Like, what, what is your definition of drawing, right? Let me know in the comments, like, what you think your definition of drawing is. Um, like, if you can draw an apple from memory, like, is that, do you know how to draw or, like, does it have to be realistic, you know, that can it be cartoony, like as long as you know how to draw a dra apple, like you know how to draw, right? I don't know, but my definition of like knowing how to draw is like literally have this full finished masterpiece in your mind and being able to transfer it onto paper. That's my definition, but I can't do that yet. Um, so then I was like, that's how I decided I wanted to create a YouTube series on documenting my art journey and that's kind of where this all started. Um, the next to do was a reoccurring theme in several youtube videos so i can't take the credit but basically number two is drawing what you want to draw i am a very anxious anxiety filled person and i get overwhelmed easily you'll probably hear me say that often that i get overwhelmed easily but that's just exactly what happened i'm the type of person who has to know everything before i start something yeah i'm one of those people <laughs> Uh, so if you've ever read the book called The Power of Understanding People by Dave Mitchell, um, my primary is I am a romantic and my secondary is I'm an expert. So it'll make more sense if you read the book and take your own assessment. I highly recommend it for anyone wanting to learn more about people and maybe how they do what they do. Or if you want to know more about yourself, it, like it's a very like personality type book and so it'll like it made a lot of sense for me like why i am you know the way that i am anyways so with that being said i first had to fall in love with the idea of learning how to draw which obviously wasn't the hard part um considering i fell in love with art and drawing since i was a teeny tiny baby i don't know if it was really like as an infant but you know 
So the expert in me had to figure out an entire curriculum or syllabus per se before I learned how to draw. Depending on how you see it, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. You can imagine how many hours I've invested watching other people's journey on YouTube learning how to draw, right? Because I don't know, my algorithm is being filled with people learning how to draw and I think that's great and it helps me too. So a lot of people will start well, a lot of people will say start with the fundamentals and the other half will just say just draw what you want to and I agree on both but leaning more towards the latter just draw what you want to uh, which drawing what you want literally goes against my expert persona where it's like I need to know the fundamentals right don't even get me started with all the research that I've done on how to do fundamentals but that's like a whole nother thing so literally just draw what you want to draw if you don't you'll get easily discouraged and probably give up because the fundamentals can be boring at first I definitely tried all sorts of methods to be honest I bought books I bought courses even watched YouTube tutorials for months maybe years I don't know but like nothing was sticking um, but remember I was also lacking imagination so it wasn't really all there the time around this time around though I'm really going to document my journey from the beginning unlike other videos where the youtuber says they've never drawn in their life and they are just learning for the first time I will put a quick disclaimer um, I don't remember how much art education I received when I was younger from but from what I can remember with my goldfish memory I do remember my mom did hire a private art teacher uh, at one time I don't know was it for a few weeks maybe a month maybe longer but knowing me and my history with private tutors honestly it wouldn't have lasted long enough for me to actually learn something I have issues with tutors I don't know it's a thing Basically, I vaguely recall taking some art classes in high school as well. I remember drawing one and drawing two, I think. I remember a few projects on perspective, shading. I also took a semester of ceramics and was enrolled in an interior design course at a technical college for three quarters. That's a story for another time, but you guessed it. Imposter syndrome at its finest made me quit the entire interior design program as well. So that's, yeah, another thing. But now with all that out of the way, I haven't really ever drawn much outside of all that. I just love watching other people draw or looking through um, sketchbook tours on YouTube. Oh, I freaking love those. I just really never believed I could draw for myself, like really draw. As a recent, I've been really drawn to a lot of nature, botanical type drawings and paintings on Instagram. So I bought a course on how to draw flowers. Actually, now that I think about it, I bought a course, like a video course, and I think I bought like a book or two, like an ebook on how to draw flowers. So I thought I'd really enjoy it, so I bought, um, or so I thought I'd really enjoy it and it would motivate me to learn how to draw, but that didn't really pan out. I don't know. And I've, as long as I can remember, I've always been obsessed with like kawaii. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. With like, <laughs> I was obsessed with like kawaii cute animal drawings and just all things cute, right? Like I freaking love cute things. But for some reason, I just couldn't get myself to draw anything even after looking through some inspiration. Again, I don't know. It could be my imagination or something, right? I now I'm missing my imagination. Um, so I'm not sure when this video will be made okay is this my self note hold on be okay so i guess i wrote the script on august 25th and like i because of my goldfish memory like i have to write scripts of like my thoughts and then i kind of reword it when i'm actually like doing my voiceovers but basically i was lacking imagination so maybe that's why i was inspired to draw anything at all now that i realize i'm lacking my inspiration maybe i'll have better luck when i start my art journey right and technically my art journey has started today is september 3rd while i'm doing this voiceover it's been a little over a week i'd say i think um my imagination is getting better there is a lot of things that i have been paying more attention to again the fear of getting picking up the pencil is a whole nother battle that i'm experiencing right now and i think this video is getting pretty long so i'm gonna kind of like go a little bit faster from here on out so number three was courses books other resources there are so many courses and books out there now as resources to teach you how to draw i had no clue where to begin uh some of the books i started with are how to see wait what how to draw what you see chibi art class which was gifted by my old roommate love you and i bought the how to draw cute view what 
how to draw cute food and uh, by the same artist I bought the how to draw cute animals and then I also bought you can draw in 30 days and so this is just a handful of the books that I have I'm on top of being an addict I am a complete hoarder so I love collecting books that I'm probably never gonna touch for 10 years uh, there's a lot more books that I have but I'll just maybe like put on the screen all the books that I have or something I don't know we'll see how lazy I am and so with and that's just the physical books like I actually invested in a few courses that were less than $50 because I just couldn't get myself to spend more than like $30 $50 for courses thinking that it just wasn't worth the money not saying the courses aren't worth the money but more so like if I spend all this money like is it gonna be worth it for me a few months ago I took a huge leap of faith and actually paid $250 something was it like around $250 before tax for a course on drawing I was like who am I I have been literally at the edge of my seat contemplating buying Ross Draws Bootcamp which I still really want or Mark I don't know his I don't know how to pronounce his name Mark Brunette I'm gonna say Brunet Mark Brunet, Marks. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say Mark. Mark's art school course for years. Okay, so maybe like a year and a half. Okay, maybe like a year and a half. But still, it's a huge amount of money. I just couldn't justify myself to buying something because like, what if I don't finish it? What if I don't like it? So I didn't buy either of those two actually at the time. Um, the two hundred fifty dollars was like a course that I saw somebody else on YouTube talking about in a review and honestly this might be a little bit well I guess it can't be racist because I'm Korean but basically the artist they were talking about was um, Korean and like the course was in Korean so I was like in my weird effed up mind I was like I wonder if I would focus better like I also think I have ADHD I cannot focus so that's another reason why but um I was like, hey, maybe if this person speaks Korean, maybe like, I don't know, maybe I'll learn better. I don't know, like, technically Korean is my first language and I, like, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. But anyway, I don't want to get, I said I was going to speed this up. But anyways, yeah, so what if I don't like it, right? So I spent even more time scouring the internet to find as many reviews as I can and which course I should buy. Clearly, I wasn't in a position where I can just buy both and choose which one I like. The internet didn't really help me out, but one thing led to another and YouTube started recommending me videos of people who were talking about how most art courses don't teach you the fundamentals or the basics because these art teachers assume you already know the basics and that's why most beginner beginners fail at these courses. Great, so I was set to fail from the beginning. Just kidding. Even having bought that $250 course a couple months back, I barely watched maybe like three videos so far. Um, the video kind of like talks about keywords and like, I don't know, like terminology or whatever. And it got to the part where it's like learning, teaching you how to draw like anatomy and basic shapes and stuff like that. And I stopped myself there because I told myself, okay, let me get the basics down of anatomy and then I'll get back to this video. Which, uh yeah it's did i say i bought this course like a couple months ago yeah probably okay so on august 30th which was a couple days ago i did purchase the art school course from mark uh for 350 dollars while it was still on sale uh, i had fomo i mean i know he has sales all the time but like it was ending on the 31st and then i was like but what if he has like a Labor Day sale? Which he did actually. In hindsight, the price went down even more. I bought it for 30% off, but on Labor Day, it was 35%. I know, it's like a whopping 25 bucks, but I'm also very, not frugal, but kind of stingy. Like if I can get a discount, you know, I want a discount. Oh, I'm so Asian. But yeah, so I started my first couple videos on the first, which was two days ago as of this recording, and sort of overwhelmed from the get-go because Mark says in his intro video, the course can take up to two years to complete, even if you spend three to four hours a day. And I was like, what? I don't got two years. I got two months maybe until... I might have to go get a job again if I, this doesn't work out. But anyways, 
Now I know I don't need to finish this course before I keep building my small art business, but I need to remind myself that the course is a supplement to my already little art skills I have that has kept my shop going for the past couple years. It'll only get better from here, right? Right. So I told myself I was never interested in learning how to draw like realistic people. If anything, I'm obsessed with wanting to learn how to draw chibi. Again, like cute kawaii style is my thing. But even with the chibi book and watching YouTube videos, something was missing. I just couldn't figure it out. They looked horrible. Like, it just, just looks really bad. I don't know why. I realized I couldn't run away from learning the human anatomy forever. So a lot of people will tell you that you need to learn the human anatomy before you can go off on your own to stylize your characters, including chibi style. So I decided to get a bunch of books on learning how to draw the human anatomy. So these are more books that I bought. Um, I bought a book called Basic Anatomy for the Manga Artist, How to Draw the Human Figure, Point Character Drawing, books one and two, and Anatomy for Artists Drawing, Form, and Pose. Jeez, I did not realize I have this many art books, which makes me happy, but not happy that I don't ever use them. Now, I've practiced a few pages out of the basic anatomy for the manga artist during my 30 day draw every day challenge, but I recently bought the other books and thought, why not create a YouTube series on learning how to draw the human anatomy? That would be a decent amount of content I could fill up my art journey with on YouTube. Um, so again, depending on when this video comes out, I'm saving that for the series. I kind of went off tangent with this one, but the point of this to do is to do your research, figure out if you prefer video or textbook style, decide if you want to learn fundamentals or a certain topic, IE, oh wait, is it IE? Or no, it was technically it's not IE, whatever. Basically, if you want to learn anatomy, color theory, light shading, um, etc., find a course or book that you think will help you. Take it from personal experience, do it in chunks. Do not try to attempt everything at once, just pick one topic that I don't know, excites you and then go from there. Like literally, maybe, I don't know, I get overwhelmed like I mentioned, like I don't know about you, maybe you don't, but just choose one, start with one. Okay, so number four, we're almost there guys, we're almost there. So this one is traditional versus digital drawing and this is a very sensitive topic for me. Not really sensitive, but gets me confused. So this one's kind of obvious, but decide which media you want to work with. Do you want to learn traditional pencil and paper or do you, do you want to work, draw on like digital on an iPad or a tablet, you know, maybe even jump right into painting. I don't know. Um, I'm going to be speaking about traditional and digital drawing. This could apply to painting or I don't know, sculpt clay. <laughs> I, I can't think of the other mediums, but anyways, you get the point. I always knew I sucked at drawing traditional. So when I went, um, so when digital drawing started to become popular, I really wanted to get myself one of those. Okay, I always thought it was a Wacom, but I guess it's Wacom, Wacom tablets when they first came out. But again, I couldn't justify spending hundreds on a tablet I probably wouldn't end up using. I ended up investing in an iPad. I started using the word investing, right? Because I am investing, not buying just for leisure. Back in 2020, when I decided to pursue my apparel business because I needed to create my designs on something. I learned about Procreate and ever since then, that's what I've been using to create designs for my apparel and stickers. I rarely ever used it to doodle or just do fun things. It was just all business on my iPad. So I've been on the fence back and forth now for the past two years on thinking I can learn to draw to traditional and digital at the same time i would attempt a traditional and just get so frustrated at how sloppy things look all the eraser shavings everywhere and the smudging oh god i get so annoyed at how messy things get so i decided you know what let's just do digital it's a lot cleaner but then i missed the whole romantic experience of drawing traditional on paper one of my artist friends i look up to i asked her what she would do and she said traditional learn traditional first now if you know me personally you know i always do the opposite of what someone tells me to do when and then waste like a bunch of time and come back around to finding out what that person told you what me or told me was right yeah i know then i started thinking well if i'm going to create a youtube channel wouldn't it be easier to draw my ipad and just screen record everything but then again the romantic in me is thinking but imagine three to five years from now when i get to look back at these videos and see how far i've come also I'm obsessed with being able to flip through physical pages and just looking at my old cringe drawings from the past. So what are you going to do, Alex? 
Make your make up your freaking mind. Okay, okay, I'll do traditional. Let's do traditional. But wait, 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 wait. I apparently had left a little update on myself on this uh, two days ago. Uh, I I know when I originally wrote the script, I said I would rather I would do traditional, but I and I could have just deleted this part, but I'm just gonna throw it in there. Um, I wanted to do rather post an update because since I purchased art school. The course, it is about digital illustration, so I am gonna do digital. Like, my pea brain cannot do both, and so I'm gonna do digital. Dig we're doing digital, guys. It's gonna be on the internet that I'm gonna do digital, okay? So if I do traditional, which I might do like a little bit of brainless sketching traditional, but if I try to like focus on traditional again, like just yell at me. Okay, we're on the last one. I don't know. I swear, this video is gonna be really, really long, and I'm really, really sorry, but not sorry at the same time. I don't know, maybe, hopefully, you learn something or get something out of this while my like throat is getting dry. Hold on, let me get some water. Okay, the big finale. Document your progress. One of the things I regret in life is when I don't document something that means a lot to me, or I end up erasing it and it's gone forever. I remember the times when I created this foodie YouTube channel and it was just so cringe. But I do miss being able to watch those videos now, although I did not make the same mistake when I created this channel in the very beginning. No matter how cringe all my videos were, I kept all the videos and I just like immediately archived it before I decided to start this journey. Maybe later down the road I will reveal them or something, but for now, yeah, no. Also, a quick update that I didn't write in my script. I was, you know, I mentioned I was a hoarder and I was putting something on my external hard drive and you'll never guess what I found in the depths of my many folders of random shit. I found all my foodie videos and it's the final edit version too. And so I'm able to just like straight up upload it if I want to. I saw a couple of them for like a couple seconds. It is so cringe. Um, but maybe later down the road, I could do some reaction videos. Oh my gosh, I don't know. It's, oh my god, it makes me so nervous, but it's so bad. It's really, really bad. But okay, yeah, so that's for another time. So not necessarily saying you have to create a YouTube channel, but for example, if you do learn to draw to traditional, do not ever throw away your sketchbooks. I love watching sketchbook tours on YouTube. It's so satisfying. I know you're gonna wanna like rip out the pages or scribble your art if you don't like something, but just put like a sticky note over it and leave a funny comment. I love adding little comments to my ugly ass drawings like, ew, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and the future me is just gonna laugh and enjoy the cringe. I'm laughing now because I have already seen like my old work and I've left comments and I think it's hilarious. It's like, it's like a little note from like, I don't know, your past you to your future you kind of thing, right? I don't know, I think it's funny. Keep it fun. This is the main reason why I wanted to document my art journey. Uh, I've been wanting to ignore my passion for art for like 20 plus years now. I know that this is going to be a huge turning point in my life and I want to be able to document every moment of it. So in another 20 years, I can look back and just see how far I've come. I'm really ready to like just come out of hiding under my imposter syndrome. Although, don't get me wrong, I'm so deathly afraid of putting my journey out there for the entire world to see. But I am doing this for those who may be in the same boat as me. I try to find other YouTube videos of artists who are just beginning their art journey from the very beginning, but most of them usually already have a background in drawing since they were a kid or just natural born talent, which I know technically, and well, I guess, I don't know, they're the rare people who were natural born. I just wanted to be someone who showed people that there are people who literally suck at drawing and see the progression a year from now, five years from now. This is just me being very raw and open about my journey and like I know again as I've mentioned in the video earlier it's like it's very subjective what I consider. I don't know how to draw but trust me like if you ask me to draw something I literally just I can't. Like the other day actually, I went to go see my client for my product design that I'm working on for his restaurant and they wanted me to draw like hot chocolate with marshmallows on a chalkboard. And I was like, oh god, no, don't put me on the spot.
spotlight for this, right? And like, how do you call yourself like a graphic designer and like an artist? Well, I don't call myself an artist, not yet. But like, on my business card, it says I'm a digital illustrator and designer. And like, how the hell do I not know how to draw hot chocolate? on a chalkboard. Trust me, I wanted to cry and break that board because it was just not working out. But then I was like, you know what, I'm doing, I'm looking at this all wrong. I was on Pinterest looking at these like realistic photos and I do not have the skill set to be able to look at a real photo and create something out of it. But instead, what I can do is I can simplify it, right? So then on Pinterest, I looked up chalkboard hot chocolate drawings. And then I was like, oh, I can do this. And it actually looked really, really good. Cause I simplified the, the subject to be just lines rather than looking at all the details of like the light and shadow and the depth and the whatever, whatever, right? And then so it like became so much easier. So I was like, I just gotta break things down and you know, yeah, break things down and just start from the bare bottom. Before I go off tangent again for like the millionth time. Yeah, I think that's about it. That's the five. It's basically... Let me go up real quick. I see I, my goldfish memory doesn't remember already. So one, imagination. Um, if you're normal, probably you have an imagination already. So that might be like off your list. Number two, draw what you want. Uh, number three, courses, books, resources, you know, whatever kind of floats your boat. Some people are great at learning through videos, some love reading, you know, like find out what your forte is. And then if you're really, really like good, you can do traditional and digital if you want. But if you're like me, just choose one. And then most importantly, just document your progress. Alrighty, well, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope it was worth it or if, like, you know, at least you took something away from this video. But anyways, cheers to finally pursuing my dreams. Okay, bye!